Hey there, it's Matt from Mac Design Studio. Uh, I'm here to try and do my first video tutorial. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a tutorial, so uh, what we'll be doing today is using some of the model information from Google Earth to create a context for us. Uh, and I am going to start from scratch, so uh, while I am not a big SketchUp user, um, because of the past history between Google and SketchUp and uh, Google Earth, uh, I find this to be a very uh, easy way to create context, especially in urban environments. Um, so I'm going to start here. In SketchUp, um, just start with a brand new, uh, as you can see, nothing is in this scene. Um, but the first and, and the key part of doing this is to add a location in SketchUp by going to Geolocation add location. And so uh, what this does is this essentially is telling your model where in the real world uh, your site actually is. So uh, what I find to uh, be the most helpful is to try to uh, cast as large of, a, uh, of an area as I think I will possibly ever need um, and then try and go a little bit larger than that. So um, this is going to be about the extents of my site, my context, uh, everything that I'm probably going to need. Um, so I'll go ahead and get that within this white uh, boundary box here. And then I'll go select region. See, <clears throat> if I needed to, I could go ahead and make this smaller. Uh, but I'm going to try and grab as large as of a swath as I can here, so I'll hit grab. And after a couple minutes of computing, uh, you'll see that it actually takes that Google Earth image, puts it right on top of uh, you know my my origin. And uh, the nice thing is actually it comes in with Google Earth terrain. If you can see that, I'll turn off just the the plain snapshot. And if we got down here. Uh, you can start to see a little bit of contour and context uh, of the terrain, um, which might be helpful uh, for you. So uh, if you deal in a lot of mountainous regions, uh, it could be a good way for you to, to start um, getting some contours and, and some site context there for you. So uh, I'd like to do all of my importing pretty much from the top view and in the uh, in the plain flat snapshot. Um, so uh, we'll do it that way for now. Um, but uh, we are now ready to get started. So the first thing that you need to do is pull up sketchup.google.com slash 3D warehouse. Uh, this is actually uh, where a lot of the uh, models that people will make uh, will be uploaded. So I will go to and type in University Circle. Helps if I can spell. Cleveland, Ohio, uh, which is where uh, this site actually is located. And so I'll just grab, uh, uh, I don't know here, uh, we'll grab the Mocha building. Um, and it doesn't really matter which one you grab first because uh, the nice thing is it's got this map feature. And this is this is something that I found to be very, very uh, critical here. So I've got the Mocha Cleveland building, um, which was actually completed by Farshid Musavi, um, right at the intersection of Euclid Avenue and Mayfield Road, you can see. But all of these other dots around here, the blue and the gray dots are actually other buildings that I can actually select and see. And all of these have been geolocated. This is going to be incredibly useful for what we're going to do here in just a minute. So what I will do is I will take this and uh, this, this Mocha model. It's going to be the first thing that I put in. And I could actually download it as a SKP file, the standard SketchUp file, or KMZ. Uh, which is going to be our Google Earth file, or uh, the zip file right here. So what I'm going to do is actually download it as a KMZ file. And uh, 
for. Um, but uh, go ahead and download that again as a KMZ file. And uh, what you'll see is that because of the geolocation of uh, the person who made this model, as well as the geolocation that I have just created for my model, I'll actually be able to uh, import that directly to where it needs to, to go. So if I go to File, Import, and then under my downloads, you can see I have Mocha Building and Site. If I go ahead and open that, there is the Mocha building uh, as designed by Farshid Musabi. Um, I can continue to go through, and what I'll do is I'll go back to this map, and what I tend to like to do is try and find some of the buildings. I'll go ahead and click on it, and then right click, open in a new tab, so that I will do uh, just a, a, a number of these kind of very, very quickly. Um, which allows me the opportunity to keep myself somewhat organized because as you start downloading a lot of these files, you can probably guess that you will um, get a little confused. So this is a good example of a model where there are multiple models that have been created by a number of uh, various SketchUp users. I tend to like to try and use the blue dot, um, which has been awarded uh, by the Google, um, I guess, people as a, a, a better model than some of the others. So if, if you have this opportunity, I generally tend to download it uh, with a blue dot. But as you've seen, um, you know, if it doesn't have a blue dot and it, it's a building that you need, that's going to be a, a, a good opportunity for you to save some time. So. Um, I'll go ahead and download a bunch of these and uh, pause the video here for you so that you don't have to watch me do this. Um, and we'll be back in just a minute. And I'm back. As you can see here, I have downloaded uh, a number of various buildings um, that we'll be using for this site. Um, I haven't gone through and renamed any of them. Um, I found that this tends to be just a, a little bit of a waste of time. Because I'm using the KMZ file, I don't need to necessarily know uh, what the name of all of these buildings are. Um, but as a general housekeeping uh, and to keep myself organized, uh, way, way to go. What I'll do is I'll keep a folder that says in SketchUp or uh, already used. And as I go through um, and add a bunch of these buildings, I will go ahead and see that... Uh, you know, I'll put it in there as, as a way to know what I have gone through and what I haven't in case I need to uh, stop for, for a little bit or my file crashes or anything. I, I kind of know where I am. So uh, I will go ahead now and um, just start plugging away and uh, start importing a bunch of these files. And uh, you can see every once in a while you'll get something that says uh, that this model is more than a thousand meters from the origin um, and that will cause a little bit of issue if you try to put this back into uh, Google Earth but if you're not planning on, on putting your whole scene back into Google Earth then uh, you can go ahead and just click preserve location and there it is it'll, it'll go ahead and populate that uh, the interesting thing to note is that you can actually uh, do a couple things with with this um, go ahead and add more imagery in case in this case you've noticed uh, some of the these buildings actually will allow you to populate off of the, uh, the the map that we've created so I'll go ahead and create another map for myself or another image um, go ahead and select that and I don't necessarily need all of that will come down and through here and just grab that and what it will do is after it's done thinking, you can see that it, it goes ahead and keeps the same origin point, but just extends the uh, the plane with the, the satellite image on it, um, as well as, I believe, the terrain. So um, there we go. You can see that uh, I've done this before. And so 
uh, I like to kind of give myself a little bit of, of room here for, for these types of extents. Um, but then I'll go ahead and turn that back off. Um, and then the nice thing about this is it just allows you to, to see if you're actually placing this, uh, this building exactly where it should be. Uh, but again, because it's geolocated, it should be the case. So let's go back to the top view and uh, we'll continue. Um, hopefully I will be able to speed this up and we'll, uh, we'll just continue. Unfortunately, you cannot select multiple uh, files to import at the same time. I mean, it'd be great to just capture them all, you know, shift control or shift click and be able to, to select them all. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. I uh, just did that one, so we'll put that in there. Um, but you'll be able to, to go through here and uh, it always zooms to the extent. So uh, that's why I like to try and gather all of my uh, files first, or at least a, a good number of, of files uh, and import them all at the same time. I just find it to be a little bit easier to, to deal with. So uh, I won't bore you by watching me import all of these, but uh, I will be back. And I'm back. So one of the things that I want to show is kind of the extent to which uh, this KMZ file and the geolocation uh, will actually work. Uh, to show that, uh, let's use, for example, uh, something over in this commercial district uh, that I want to I want to go ahead and, and add a building to because I think it's important. So I'll go up and uh, go to my import, and I'll try and import the grog shop. And you'll notice I keep my eyes over here, and nothing happens. Uh, instead, <laughs> where that file is actually located is right at my origin. Uh, so I'll go ahead and delete that. And the, and the reason for that is, is actually quite simple. You know, uh, SketchUp can only keep track of so much information before it, it essentially gives up. So uh, just just be aware that if you're getting a lot of the you know 1,000 meter uh, warnings for some of these buildings out here and then you try and import a building that's even further away and you don't get that 1000 meter warning uh, you might want to look at, at the origin because uh, odds are that it hasn't uh, imported in the correct location in future videos I'll go ahead and show ways to get around it essentially creating a new geolocation with a common building and then going ahead in in the build in, in the uh, SketchUp file and marrying the two together um, using that that base uh, common building as a as as a origin point. Um, so I'll show as I said I'll show that again in in, in a different video. Um, but this is it. This is uh, the context of uh, the University Circle area in Cleveland, Ohio that, that I've downloaded. Um, I've imported everything uh, just about uh, an hour. It's taken me to download and, and import all of these things. One of the last things that I wanted to talk about is probably something that I should have, uh, should have talked about a little bit earlier, but it's the fact that using these KMZ files, or even if you downloaded the uh, S. KP file, uh, the native SketchUp file, um, most of these, uh, not all of them, but most of them, uh, most of these files come with maps that actually depict the elevations for the, uh, for the building. I found this to be incredibly helpful. Uh, it's a way to save on modeling. Um, it's a way to keep file sizes down. Uh, and it's a way to go ahead and just uh, save time more than anything. If uh, this building is something in the background and it's not necessary, I'm not going to go ahead and model every single one of these windows. But if I'm doing a rendering, it might be helpful. If I'm showing it to a client, it might be helpful to, to see where some of these windows are. You know, Once you get down to eye level or around eye level, uh, let me see if I can do that because I'm, again, not a native SketchUp user, so uh, bear with me but I can pan around this area and understand what some of the uh, some of the context actually looks like so I'll, I'll pan back here and so in this area I can really understand what the where the windows are and things like that without having to have them modeled so uh, I found it to be fairly helpful um, again 
it's very quick, very easy, and hopefully it uh, it's something that you can find useful. So um, if you have any questions or anything that, that I can help with, if this wasn't clear, feel free to contact me um, on my blog, uh, which is where you found this video. But uh, other than that, thank you very much, and hopefully this is helpful.